Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Where have we been? What's happening? What's going on? Sick as fuck is where we've been. Well, that's where you've been. That's where I've been. Oh, man. There needs to be like a stipulation before any family outing that if you've been sick prior to the outing, don't fucking show up. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. That's just, you know. It's just good manners. Right. Right. Because if you have been sick... And then the next day you go to a family outing, <laughs> you're the asshole because you are literally getting your family sick. That being said, I love my family very much. I, too, love your family very much. But I am suffering consequences. You are suffering, and I am suffering as a consequence mm. of you suffering consequences. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we, I've been I've been sick. Yeah. And so we haven't done a podcast in a couple of days. No, sorry. But I believe the last thing that we did was uh, Jeremiah chapter 36. That is correct, sir. And in that one, I believe um, God told uh, Jeremiah to write down all the shit that he said. And, and then, so Jeremiah was like, hey, Baruch, write down all shit. the shit that I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he passed the buck. Yeah. And then... Uh, then he told Baruch to bring it to uh, some people that were going to listen princes, to him. Princes, princes yeah. and guys. And they were like, oh, man, that's cool. Uh, that we sounds should, legit. We should totally take that to the king. And then they took it to the king. And the king was like, put that shit in the fire. Fuck off. Yeah. And then they rewrote it again. Yeah. Because God wanted to write it, apparently. God was again. like, rewrite it. Yeah. And Jeremiah was like, Baruch, you heard the God. And then Baruch was like, actually, I didn't. And Jeremiah was like, do I have to do everything myself? <laughs> So that was Jeremiah chapter 36. Sure as fuck was. Which means that today we're getting into... Jeremiah chapter 37. All right, let's do this. Okie dokie. All right, we are hopping into Jeremiah chapter 37. Okay. Couple notes before we start. All right. This chapter is numbered as Jeremiah chapter 44 <laughs> in the Septuagint, okay, which is the Greek translation. Yeah. Okay. This also is the start of a narrative section, so it's like a story of its own. Okay. Um, starting here, chapter 37 through chapter 44. Okay? Got it. Okay. So that's what's happening. Okay. okay? Yep. Now. Now. King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Kaniah, the son of Joachim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. So somebody was ruling that Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to rule. Okay, here's the thing. The reign of Kaniah or Jeconiah, depending on... Who you talk to? Yeah. Right. He, it was very short. It lasted only a few months of oh, I remember 598 this. BCE. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right. Okay. Yeah. His reign ended so quickly because Nebuchadnezzar came for a second time to subject Jerusalem under his control. Do you remember yep. that? Yes. Okay. In taking the throne, Zedekiah was pledged to obey Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Okay. Now, because of the Egyptian influence at court... Zedekiah decided to break his pledge with Babylon, which was the immediate cause of the final siege ah, of Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's so again, where we are. Lots of politics. Yes. Lots of lots politics. Lots of politics. Okay. Yep. But neither he nor his servants nor the people of the land gave heed to the words of the Lord, which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. Okay. Okay. And Zedekiah, the king, sent Jehoiakim the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah. Okay. Okay, so Zedekiah sent two, two guys. Yep. Okay, yep. Saying, pray now to the Lord our God for us. So um, Zedekiah is in a bit of a bind, and he's like, 
you two dudes, go talk to Jeremiah. See if he can help us with the God dude. Yeah, like, shit is getting real. Right. I'm not prepared to, like, publicly um, be like, oopsie, my bad. Okay, sorry, God. But go see if he can maybe, like, secret a deal for right, us. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Now, Jeremiah was coming and going among the people, for they had not yet put him in prison. So this okay. was before that time. Because right. Baruch don't know how to tell a story straight. Because, okay. you know, Baruch is writing this shit down. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote this shit all out of order. You know what? You want a job done? <laughs> well, we don't do know. it your we damn don't, self. I, we don't know that he wrote it all out of order. We know that somebody put it in here out of no, order. No, I'm blaming Baruch. Okay. Right. I'm blaming Baruch. He's like, make me write this shit. I'll show you. <laughs> and he wrote it all down, but he wrote it all out of order. Got That's it. what I think happened. Got it. And Jeremiah you don't think it was, was like, like as they were running from the Babylonians, like they just lost them. They dropped them all on the ground and then they picked them up in the wrong order. Um, well, Baruch wasn't the one running. Well, I'm just saying, you know, maybe they were they were in a hurry to get somewhere and they just dropped them. And that's how they that's how they ended up. You know, I don't know. I think that Baruch was a little bit salty. OK, because right. he's like, make me write this shit. <laughs> God told you to do it, asshole. Well, there's been lots of scholars between now and then that could have put this back in the right order, even back when they still rearranged. Stuff. OK, I will give so you that. I don't I don't really will, buy that. I but. will give you that, except maybe, maybe. They had notes that we don't have that said, Jeremiah's a prick. Let's put this, let's keep this out of order you just think? as, like, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying it could be. You okay, know? yeah. Could be. Right. Okay. Um. Then Pharaoh's army came up from Egypt, and when the Chaldeans, who were besieging Jer Jerusalem, heard news of them, they departed from Jerusalem. So we've heard this story already. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, thus you shall say to the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me, behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come up to you, or I'm sorry, which has come up to help you, will return to Egypt to their own land. So he's like, they ain't going to help you for yeah, long. I don't right. know why y'all depending on them, stupid. Got it. And the Chaldeans shall come back and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Okay. Okay. Thus says the Lord, do not deceive yourselves, saying the Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. For though you had defeated the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained only wounded men among them, they still would rise up, every man in his tent, and burn the fucking city with fire. Hmm. So he's like, even if they only had 10 broken men left. Those people would destroy the city. Yeah. Okay. Y'all y'all need to lay down arms. Got it. Because this is not happening. I kind of doubt they only had 10 people left, though. No, no. But God is saying, even if that were the case. Right. He's not saying that was the case. He's saying, I'm telling you now, even if this happened. Sure. Y'all would still fucking lose. But I don't believe him. No, I don't either. So. I don't either. <laughs> All right, so I have some notes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, it says that um, Pharaoh's army came up from Egypt. Yeah. The Pharaoh that they're talking about is Hophra or Apries. This depends because it's spelled different ways. Okay. Okay, but it's the same guy. And he was the fourth king of the 26th dynasty of Egypt. And he ruled from... 598 to about 570 BCE. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He forged an alliance with Zedekiah to rebel against Babylon, sending an army in the summer of 588 BCE. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This caused the Chaldeans to temporarily lift the siege in Jerusalem to deal with the Egyptians. However, he retreated before actually joining the battle, leaving Jerusalem to fall to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. Got it. Okay. Yep. So that's where we sit. Okay. Okay. And it happened when the army of the Chaldeans left the siege of Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, that Jeremiah went out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to claim his property there among the people. This is where he bought the... Where he had bought that property. land. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's like some question like, what do you mean he left Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin like, he literally bought land in Jerusalem. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, but Benjamin was a separate section of... It wasn't Jerusalem. It wasn't Jerusalem's a city, right? Yes, so, but mean, that's what I'm saying. Remember when he was in jail and he bought land? Yeah. He bought land in Jerusalem. Okay. 
And this says he went out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin. And so people are like, wait, what? Got it. Okay. But um, they're thinking that maybe there was like a misunderstanding of how it was written or translated and that probably he went with a bunch of Benjamites. Benjaminites. Okay. Well, I think this is, it's really weird that we're like, this is the same, same exact story we've heard just a different way. Like, yeah, you know, like yeah. we've already heard this it almost no, verbatim. Not, not this part. We heard about the army and the war and that part. Yeah. But we also heard him about him buying the land. No, and- we heard about him buying the land. We did not hear about him. Now he's going to go see his land. Right. OK. All right. So this is not the same part right. of that story. OK. okay? And when he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the guard was there, whose name was Arijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he seized Jeremiah the prophet, mm. saying, you're going to love this. Okay. okay? Ready? Yeah, ready? You, in particular, are going to love this. <laughs> this is what the guard said. You are defecting to the Chaldeans. Exactly what I've been saying. Right? That's why I said you're going to love this. Right? Then Jeremiah goes, False. I am not defecting to the Chaldeans. Do you believe him? No. Right? No, because this whole thing is... Whatever. (laughs) I know. You've been saying this whole time. I'm pretty sure he's a goddamn spy for Babylon. Right. Yeah. That's the way it's been... I mean, it's the way it sounds. Yeah, exactly. But he did not listen to him. The guard didn't listen to the arguments. So, Arijah... Is that how I said it before? Arijah seized Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. Good on him. Right? Yeah. Okay, these are different princes than the princes before he went to jail. Okay. Okay. Right. And that's important because these guys. They don't like him. No. Okay. Therefore, the princes were angry with Jeremiah and they struck him and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe. You know, Jonathan. I, I mean, this really vindicates a lot of my ideas that I had. I know. Where, like, they're probably angry at him because it seems like he's at least, it, it at least is plausible that, that he is working he was against in them. League. Yeah. yeah. It may be not working against them so much as like in league with the Babylon. Right. Yeah. Like, he might not be actively working against Jerusalem or whatever. Right. But. He clearly was trying to play both sides. Yeah. So, to save his own ass. Right, right. But they had made that the prison, you know, Jonathan the scribe. Sure. Right? Yep. Okay, so now I I have some notes, so let's go back and read some notes. Okay. Okay? All right. This was some 15 years after the sympathetic princes of Judah described in the previous chapter. Okay. Okay. So yep. remember, I told you different guys. Right. Okay. A new generation, because 15 years later, a new generation and new conditions brought forth leaders with absolutely no sympathy to Jeremiah or his message. Got it. They were like, nah. Sure. Temporary arrangements had been made to incarcerate Jeremiah in the house of the Secretary of State. Okay. Okay. That's who this Jonathan the scribe was. Okay. Okay. All right. And cisterns were sometimes used to imprison arrested people. And that is a pit or a hole where the prisoner could neither walk nor comfortably lie. Hmm. Okay. So when they. Sounds just like a hole in the ground, basically. That's exactly what it is. Got it. So that's what the prison is. Okay. Yeah. When Jeremiah entered the dungeon and the cells. Dungeon. Like. We all have a dungeon in our house. Jonathan the scribe has one. We have one. (laughs) You know, you know how you do, right? Right. So anyway, when Jeremiah entered the dungeon and the cells and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. The king asked him secretly in his house and said, hey, is there any word from the Lord? (laughs) And can you keep this on the DL? And Jeremiah said, Hey, as a matter of fact, there is. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. Then he said, you shall be delivered into the hands of the king of Babylon. Boom. Even though you stuck me in a fucking cistern, my story hasn't changed. Right. That's That's, awfully brave. Yeah, it is. It is. Right? Moreover. I mean, I guess it's supposed to lend credence to his, his, what he's saying. He's, he's, he's literally getting out of jail, going to talk to the king and telling the king, no, you're still fucked. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, Yeah. I, I think that he totally knew what was coming, though, and was like, it doesn't matter if you kill me now or not. Like, it's you're still, still coming. It's still coming. Right. Like, whatever. Well, to be fair, if he was working with, if he did know that the Babylonians, the Chal- Chaldeans or whatever, are going mm-hmm. to be that much of a force and destroying them. Yeah. Even if he just 
you know, knew that intuitively. Right. Whether it be from God or not, right? Th- that's what I'm saying. Or if he had some insight and in information. And, Either and it way. it could have been a bit of both, right? But like, if, he, if he had this idea that they were going to destroy them, it's better to be on their side. Like, it's better to not, it's better to say, yeah, they're going to totally whip our ass, you know? Mm-hmm. Then it is to say, no, we're going to stand up and fight against them. Right, so exactly. Because kind then of, your name is attached to ringleader right, fighting against right. instead of, like, maybe he's got a chance. If Zedekiah doesn't have him killed, maybe he's got a chance to survive yeah, under. Yeah, he can totally be like, I was saying you guys would take over the whole time, like, guys. Remember, thank you for that insider information. Yeah. I did try to help you, you will recall. And I was jailed, as a matter of fact. Right. So, could you not? Yeah. I just can't buy that it's God when there's so much other politics going on with regard to the right. Egyptians and everything exactly. else, you know? Exactly. So. Okay, but um, Jeremiah had more to say. Okay. Moreover, Jeremiah said to King Zedekiah, what offense have I committed against you, against your servants, or against this people that you have put me in fucking prison? Where now are your prophets who prophesied to you, saying, the king of Babylon will not come against you or against this land? So... He's got a fair point. Yeah. And those guys are gone because they were like, no. Right. No, Babylon ain't coming. What? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. This is great. Everything's fine. It's yeah. fine. Nothing's going to happen. We're fine. Right. And so now he's like, do you see them? I don't see them. They're not here. So what's up? Right. Why are you mad at me? I'm I'm the one that told you this was happening. From the, from the get-go. Yeah. 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 Therefore, please hear now, O my lord, the fucking king, please let my petition be accepted before you, and do not make me return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Sorry, I thought I might have had another oh, note. No, but you're I don't, good. Okay. I don't have another note. Was that so? Was that the, no? Oh no, no there's a little bit not, left. Okay. I was just checking to make sure I didn't have any notes on that little section. Got it. Got okay? it. Okay. Yeah. No, we're almost done. Hang tight. Okay. I'm hanging. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah to the court of the prison, and that they should give him daily a piece of bread from the baker's street until all the bread in the city was gone. So he's still going to imprison him. Yeah. Just not as badly. Thus, Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. The end. I see. Yeah. So So he's like, well, you gave me bad information. So not bad information. You gave me information I didn't want to hear. So I'm still going to I'm going to throw you in jail. But, but I'm not going to put you in a pit. I'm going to put you in white collar jail. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like, I'm going to put you in the prison that if Trump ever went to prison, he would go <laughs> to that prison instead of like where all the rapists and bad guys go. Right. Right. He's like, technically, yes, you've been the one that's right. Been right. Most you're of the right, time. You're right. So, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I will but, imprison you real hard. Yeah. I still, I mean, you still were clearly working with the child. Right. Yeah. I you just know? can't get over that. Like I'm just, he, he he's, he's, I don't know what it, it just the whole thing. I mean, we're reading this from his perspective, right? And so even from his perspective, it still looks like nah, dude. Right? Nah. Yeah. If you're writing it, and I still think like without even somebody telling me right. that you might be a double agent or something. Yeah. Then you probably are. Right. You know. Yeah. But what do I know? I mean, I wasn't around back then, so I don't know. It just seems that way. It just they thought it apparently. Right? That which I knew really, you were gonna really makes me happy. I knew you were gonna enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was very excited about that little portion <laughs> for you. Like, oh, husband's gonna sleep good tonight. Yeah. He was vindicated by a guard in the Bible. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that was Jeremiah chapter 37. Sure as fuck was. Which means that assuming we're not sick again. Right. We will be back tomorrow with Jeremiah chapter 38. Apologies for being off schedule. We're trying to catch up. Yeah. Thank you and good night. Yeah. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. 
But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.